everyone. Welcome back to another Sports Talk Plus video show. You hear us every Saturday, 10 a.m. to noon on ESPN Radio 94.1 during High School Sports Talk, but now we're talking some college football, NFL, and a little bit of Major League Baseball postseason. It's October baseball. Oh, it's a great time of year to air. The weather's getting cooler and uh, getting closer to Christmas. And we got a lot of hate presents on our Hey, cold weather. Hey, cold weather. Uh, you, I, you know what I say about cold weather? You can always put layers on. Summertime, you can't go, you can't go naked. Although... You can get start, low. You can get we, low. As we start with college football, our guy Mike Leach, who I think is a little bit of Ed Young-like uh, in college football, he said it, it reminded him of Woodstock last night, because except everybody was, had clothes on. As Mike, Washington, you got to stay away from those kind of concerts. Washington State beat USC. I called it. I told you Luke Falk is my dark horse for the Heisman. He was 20 for 20 a couple weeks ago throwing the ball. They got that escape. He got hurt against Boise. They win the game. They take down Southern Cal with Sam Darnold, who's not going to be in the Heisman anymore. He might be the number one pick to the Jets or whoever. But my man Luke Falk deserves some respect. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Tell me what that means to me. Running back from Penn State, Barkley. Now, he's the favorite for the Heisman. Yeah, I give you that. One. But Falk deserves an invite. Like I told you, Pumphrey did last year for San Diego State. Danielle Pumphrey. Falk deserves an invite, especially if this team keeps it going. Won't get it. Why? Because you're a be. hater? Not a hater. He's not going to be a hater. Maybe the last Heisman Trophy hopeful from Washington State. Jason Gesser? Good guess, because I don't even think he was. <laughs> I was Jason Gesser. I don't know. Washington State people are going to like comment on this and tell you that you're a Washington dope. State people are not watching they this. They will. No. I, I promise you there will be one Washington State person at some time. There won't even be a Washington State fan, let alone a Washington State person. Why are you hating on the Cougars? Tell me who's going to beat them. Look at this team. They're, they're on fire right now. They're yeah, great. He's got to go to the info. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, they're great. By the way, first time, first time uh, Washington State had uh, beaten or started five and zero since two thousand one, beating SC like they did. And I tell you what, their defense is a little better than I thought. They had trouble covering that. I watched that game until three in the morning on the East Coast. Almost, I got parts of it. I, I, I you dozed I off. Think didn't I think, yeah, I dozed off a little bit. You're, uh, I saw the fumble lady. at the end, and then I saw the people jumping on the field, and I saw some X ray flash. So I did watch it to the end. Yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, uh, you know, when you're laying in bed watching game, you fall asleep. Not if you have your eyes awake and you're sitting in the right position. You know what, though? Th this defense I was really worried about, Ed, and they played a lot better than I thought. Kudos to them. As my guy, I'm going to butcher his name all over the place, Hercules Mata Afa. He was great. Hercules, Hercules, yes. <laughs> all right, Miss Clump from uh, Night Professor. They got Oregon next week. That's actually a tricky game. <laughs> they, might, they might lose that. Yeah, they win big against Southern Cal, and then they lose, they're going to lose, lose Oregon. 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 I got to stick up. with you, Washington State. I've been praising you. Oregon 39, Washington State 28. You it's just the way it is. I hate to say it. At Cal, they'll win that. Colorado Should. homecoming, they'll win that. Should. At Arizona, they'll win that. Yes. Your Stanford boys, they're going to beat them in Pullman. Yeah, Stanford going Pullman. south quick. They're going south. Well, they won last week against UCLA. Running yeah. back uh, shredded that defense. At Utah and an end of the year at Washington. That's a tricky game, too. Yes. Well, so they yeah. got two that are tricky. I would argue, though, if they only lose one of those two, Oregon and Washington, and we don't have four unbeatens from Power Five conferences, and they win the Pac-12 title game, which is the North, which means they can't lose to a North Division team that has an equivalent or better record, and you know, be just them head to head. I would argue with one loss in a conference title, they deserve to be in the Final Four. You would tell me no. If we don't have four undefeateds, you would agree with that, okay? If we have three undefeateds, then there's a spot open for anybody with one loss. That's how I look at it. You have to reward the body of work on the field. That's how I look at it. Now, if you got everybody's winless, I mean, un, not undefeated, everybody has at least one loss. Now, that ups the stakes for a lot of teams, such as Washington State or whoever. But if you got four undefeateds, I almost don't care who they are, that's the final four. So, if we have a one loss of Washington State and it's close to Oregon or, or, or UW, and they win a conference title, and Ohio State's got one loss, which was not so close to Oklahoma, who are you going with? Ohio State. I, I say if it's a close loss, Washington State. It depends on where the loss is and how it goes. But now, if they lose big, I go Ohio State. I I, I'm, I'm sticking with Ohio State. Period on that situation. Well, do you think they'll get there? Mm. Penn State's looking good on the Big Ten. I tell you what, did you watch that game last week with them in Iowa? Yeah. And he cautioned everybody, watch out for Iowa. He told I was you guys, almost right. He that almost caught. You know what? And Saquon Barkley, my goodness, he is something else. He is he's definitely a Heisman. He is hurdler, and uh, he's the best running back in the country right now. And I think that they're. 
going to be position. Although I did not agree with James Franklin uh, trying to block that poor field goal a couple weeks ago. I thought that was just You're a, He's a Franklin hater. I'm not a hater. I just thought it was Nittany unacceptable. Nittany Valley people, he's a Franklin I hater. I just thought it was unacceptable. That's all. I think it was necessary to have your whatever it was. Fourth, I didn't think it was. But Barkley, I'm a fan of his. I like his game. He's really good. Let's go to some important games matters here, Ed. Uh, games of note. And by the way, uh, so Washington tickets to one. I get that one. Remind me, beat Duke last night. We both expected that to happen, and it did. Clemson, Virginia Tech. This is the game everybody in our neck of the woods has been waiting for. Prime time spot. You know, Clemson has won seven straight games against ranked foes. It's the longest streak in the country. Virginia Tech, Josh Jackson stepped in at offense. A quarterback and done a nice job. That Clemson pass rush headed up by the Richmond native, oh, oh. Dylan Farrell, is just suffocating. And remember, they got a kid from our area, and Jordan Williams from Cox, uh, Virginia Beach, that's going to probably redshirt this year because they're so stacked on the D line. Uh, Big and quick on that line. New QBs done well filling in for Watson. They got some still guys at receiver to do well. Renfro uh, stepping up big for them. Uh, I think Clemson wins this game pretty close. Cam Phillips leads the NCAA in catches of 20 plus yards. I think Tech will get some big plays. I'm not sure at the end that they'll get the stop and the big play to go ahead of Clemson should they be down in this game. That place, it'll be a raucous atmosphere there in Blacksburg. They got game day there. Uh, you know what, though? This is what I'm thinking. I was thinking about this earlier today. This is a win-win for Virginia Tech pretty much no matter what. And I'm going to tell you why. Because barring like a 35 nothing loss where there's a brawl and the coach gets ejected and players get ejected and suspended, yeah, we're not, we're which we're not wishing that. or hoping for that. Barring so, a catastrophe, this is a win for Virginia Tech because they're in the national limelight tonight. So barring that, you're in the limelight. You're not viewed as a top 10 program anyway. No, I'm not disrespecting you, Hogan. I'm just telling you the honesty. They're not viewed as a top 10 program. They're viewed as a top 15 to 30 program. They're viewed as a second-tier team. Right. They're not viewed on the same platform as Alabama and Ohio State and... Uh, all those teams that you think of that come to mind in the top five, top ten every year. You could throw up Michigan on a given year, Penn State on a yeah, given Florida year, or whatever. Florida on a given year, whoever you, know, you want to throw Georgia, whatever. Auburn, Georgia, Florida, whatever. SEC schools, right? Sure. Uh, Washington, USC, Oklahoma, Texas. So not few. They don't have that second tier. So if you win, it's the, the opportunity is so great and the risk is so small that the reward is it's such a huge opportunity. I think this is a, this is a huge chance for Virginia Tech with a win, it's colossal because now you're in the picture for the Final Four. Mm -hmm. A loss, it does it's not damaging. Yeah, you know you're not in the top ten, you know, but you weren't expected to be anyway. You're still in condition to get to a good bowl and be top twenty five. So I d I think it's a win win for tech, barring a catastrophe. I think the risk is so low and the reward is so much greater. Yeah, you know, I got I agree with you on that. It's kind of funny to say because you think a game of this magnitude Right. You wouldn't really say that, a loser to loser and a winner to winner. But I could see Tech playing them well, coming out on a shorthand, but represent in terms of a jam-packed stadium. Uh, game day was unbelievable this morning watching some of that. Uh, so it, it sells itself on everything, but you take everything, distract everything away from that L. That's the key. So when people would be like, well, wait, I don't even remember if they won or lost. Then that's definitely a win-win. But if you lose and alumni and all they're like, man, we lost to Clemson. It's a good team. We should have beat them. Forget everything else. But um, I, I think it's going to be a close game, but I'm just leaning on Clemson. Clemson way better than I thought. That quarterback Moore, first year in as a starter, just like he's been there forever. And that defensive line rivals some professional team's defensive Ooh. line. That's how good they are. Almost as good as your Raiders D-line, which did no. have a bad time against the Redskins. Raiders, oh, And he my guaranteed God. that last week, folks. We'll get that in a minute. In a few minutes. Yeah, because we're going to talk pro coming up. But, oh, my God, my Raiders. I think you have, if not the two best defensive coordinators in the country, two of the five best with Brent Venables and uh, with Bud Foster. I'm not sure Venables will get a – I mean, I'm sorry, Foster will get a head coaching job now. But Venables, he's 46. I think he's a head coach in waiting uh, for the right program. Dare we say a LSU type or Louisville? And they got the scandal going on with uh, college basketball. Yeah, Petrino could, could be the next guy out. But yeah, Venables I think it's going to be a head coach here soon. Yeah, I can, and soon. you know, when you're right, Bud Foster's been out too long, and I think the feeling or the want, desire to be head coach has passed him by. He's one of the highest paid assistants in the country. He's tremendously known for what he does, and he doesn't really need. Why would he leave a situation where he's probably going to be there until he wants to leave to take a head job where in two, three years he could be fired? So. You know, you're always hired to be fired. It's a huge opportunity for Venables, too, another, another spotlight game. But the, Clemson's got the bigger risk because now you lose this game, uh-oh. And they've had some. They've had a couple close scares. Think about it. Georgia Tech gave them a scare. NC State almost beat them. Uh, Pitt beat them last year, even though they got to the final and won the championship over Alabama. So they have not been immune to being beaten. The ACC Florida State's beaten them in recent years. North Carolina took them to the wire in the ACC championship. So 
I think Tech will put up a good fight and this game will be close uh, when all is said and done. Uh, looking at a couple other games of note, Georgia, Tennessee. Ed is calling for the upset. It's my upset Tennessee special. Tennessee in Knoxville, Neyland Stadium. You know, Tennessee has lost 26 consecutive games to top 10 opponents. I'm saying it's going to be 27. I took you against Florida. You let me down. You did help me against Georgia Tech when uh, he doubted you. But something uh, Rocky about Top. Team. I'm feeling Rocky Top. I've been burned by Georgia twice this year, too, by the way. They burned me at Notre Dame. The, the freshmen stepped I it up. It. Picked it. And then they smoked Mississippi State last week. They smoked them. Picked Mississippi it again. State coming off that win over LSU. Their defense is for real. That defensive front is. And they have running backs, Chubb and, and that company and that crew. I, I think that they'll win this game tight. And on the road, they could be flat early. I think they'll find a way over the Vols. Uh, Butch Jones, though, he gets this one. It gets him off the, dare we say, hot seat. And like Kevin someone has been on the SEC hot seat for a while. I think it's it's important for Butch Jones to get this one at home. Big spot here against the Georgia Bulldogs. I can see a late field goal to win it, 22. If 19. that happens, I will be so disgusted at you, Tennessee, after picking you in Florida. I can uh, see it. Yeah, I'm sure you can see it. Or Georgia wins 38-7. to Who knows? Mississippi State at Auburn. We both have Auburn in this one at home. They'll be talking about Jarrett Stidham at quarterback. If he has a big game, I know they had that one loss early to Clemson. Can he thrust himself back in the Heisman race? You know, it's funny. If you have that bad game early as a player or a team, you can still be in a title hunter or Heisman. But if you have it at midseason, and it's almost midseason for, like, SC with Darnold, you kind of fall out of it. Auburn can get themselves back in it because they have the opportunity with Alabama end of the year. They get to that one loss and they win that game. They're in the SC championship. Boom. And Stidham, he wins that game and plays great. He's going to New York. He might not win the Heisman. You still got to deal with Barkley and, dare we say, Luke Falk, Baker Makefield out of Oklahoma, and some other guys that are in that picture. But uh, I think Auburn's a team that's kind of quietly rolling along. The 13th in the country. I think they're going to get into that top seven or eight here soon. Teams in front of them are going to fall. Yeah. Uh, I think they got written off, and, and they might not mind it because they lost the defending champs in a game that was fairly close. They just couldn't block them. They couldn't block them. Now, they might block them if they see them again. You never know. You know, Auburn, I kind of like look at Auburn as like them and LSU. When you don't think about them, they're at the top and they're playing great. Then when you start looking at them and talking high heavens, it looks like they're in a rebuilding mode. It looks like LSU's had some more injuries and coaching mm -hmm. uncertainty. Darius Geist, the running back, got hurt, and Auburn is, is starting to settle in. And they got more stability at quarterback. LSU's had some rough quarterback play ever since Jamarcus Russell got to the NFL and ate himself. They haven't had a right. great quarterback yeah. play. And Bam, uh, Auburn's had Cam Newton, I think Stidham, the – the Baylor transfer has been an answer for them. So they're solving some things at that spot. And you know Auburn with their history of running backs. Cadillac right. Williams, Ronnie Brown, Bo Jackson. They're going to always have a guy to run the ball. So. Uh, Maryland and Minnesota is another game we had on our picks list. Maryland, I tried to bait him, folks. I tried so hard to bait him and take Maryland because they're down to their third-string quarterback with the injury. Kasim Hill, the freshman, just got hurt. I had a chance to watch him in a 7-on-7 seven -seven last year. He's, he's pretty talented as the backup. But Minnesota is going to be the quietest 4-0 team. And to apply Ed Young's logic of undefeateds, if you're undefeated, you know, at the midway point, and you're not ranked, shame on the rankings. They need to be ranked. So Minnesota wins this game at home, 4-0. They need to be in top 25. Put them in. Put, Put them in. in. Put them in. Undefeated, 4-0. They're one of the top 25 teams in the country. And they have one of the best young coaches, too, P.J. Fleck. Where was he? Western Michigan. Western Michigan. Did a great job at Western yeah, Michigan. played at Northern Illinois with that Michael Burner Turner team and get it done. So college football there. Uh, you have a feel in the Final Four right now. Oklahoma State let me down last week. I'm so disappointed. My man Mason Rudolph looked like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer against that TCU pass rush. I tell you what, TCU's a sleeper too. Their defense is getting better under Gary Patterson. They're controlling the line of scrimmage. Kenny Hill running the ball. Uh, quarterback too. Uh, they're, they're a physical team, and they're on the come up. I, I just didn't understand why people weren't talking more about TCU. Usually every year... They're an 8, 9, 10 win team, and they weren't really talked much about preseason. I had to go back and see if they did they disband, did they trade everybody off. I mean, they're usually right there, and Gary Patterson does a great job. Uh, and that went in Stillwater. They went in there and, and beat them. And I'm not writing you just off yet, o OSU. I still got faith in you against Oklahoma, but I'm, I'm starting to waver a little bit. I'm starting to waver a little bit, teeter totter. I'm done with Florida State. Get them out. Get them out. The injury. <laughs> Francois that got killed him there. But I'm going to tell you right now, here's my four. You ready? Bama's, after that, after just demolishing Vanderbilt, they're number one with a bullet. I can't even argue it. Even if I wanted to just do it for fun and laughs and giggles, I can't do it. Bama's one. It's inarguable. I'm going to put Penn State in at three. 
Clemson is two. And at number four for me, Washington State. You just beat SC, you deserve it. And he's doing the thing with his lip because he disagrees with the four. You like the first three, but you're going to give me a fourth team. Who's your, who's your new Alabama, team? You go TCU? You, you got go? Alabama. Who you got again? Alabama. Alabama, Clemson, defending champ, mm -hmm. who Kirk Herbstreit says should be number one. And PSU. PSU. Not PSU. You know, a PSL, but a PSU. <coughs> Excuse me, people. He's <coughs> coughing now because he, he didn't. choke me up on that. He didn't, uh, he didn't have his water and pretzels before the show. Where's um, Ohio saying? State? They lost. Lost to Oklahoma. So, so you got to have Oklahoma in there if you're gonna. I, I don't have you in there at the moment, Oklahoma. So yeah, that's, yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you on gotta that. Have Oklahoma. I, I'm, I'm top of my head. Right now, the, the coaches have it: Bama one, Clemson two, Oklahoma three, Penn State four. The AP had it: Bama one, Clemson two, Oklahoma three, Penn State four. So I'm taking out Oklahoma and putting in Washington State, who beat SC number five. Now you still have Washington, Georgia, Michigan, TCU, Wisconsin, Virginia Tech. Dare we say in there? Yeah, I, so I'm you, you agree with Bama, Clemson, Penn State. Now, do you, yeah. who's your fourth? Do you go Oklahoma at the moment? I need another SEC team. Who's the next Georgia. one? Georgia. Who do you think is going to lose today? Yeah, let's see if they Georgia's lose today. Georgia's on the Auburn's got one loss. Can they take Auburn and Alabama both out of the SEC West? Mm. That, that, that's going to be tough. Here's a team nobody's talking about. We mentioned about Auburn, TCU, Miami. They had the whole hurricane situation. Nobody's talking about Mark Richt in Miami. Mark Rick could never win the big game at Georgia, it seemed like. But he's got a chance at Miami. They've got good linebacker play, sophomores there. Miami's a team, and they got a chance in the ACC to do something. Athletic, and they're in the right type of league for how, what they present. And I don't think Louisville's goes. defense is what it is. Florida State's having some offensive issues. And, yeah, I think they have a, they have a good chance. So they'll play Virginia Tech. But. I agree. So who's your fourth? Who are you going with? Pick. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna stay with your four. I don't know about Washington State. It's gonna lose another game. Uh, they're gonna lose another game. So didn't put in Oklahoma. Let's go Oklahoma. Yeah, there you go. He wasn't gonna stay with that. He he hates on Washington State. He's just just. Yeah, I can't get on. Is it the Cougars? They're the Cougars. Yeah, yeah the Cougars. You don't even know what their nickname is. That's how much he cares and knows about Washington State. Terrible guy. He just great place to visit, but team wise, no, they don't go oh. there. Run through some rapid fire NFL stuff. I, I want an explanation on what happened to the Raiders, who you said would beat up on the Redskins, who you tried to. Sure to say was a JV team. You know, Oakland had won eight straight games East Coast time zone, eight straight. But yeah, as I was I telling uh, telling someone last night, you know what? Sometimes you play that Sunday night primetime game against the team. It, they, they looked out of sync, and the Redskins, Redskins might be for real. I'm going to hand it to all you Redskins fans in the area because I always blast hey, them, but the they Redskins. have to be given their props. Hey, but I also say Oakland hey, played their worst hey. game. You didn't get their best. Carr got sacked, what, four times, which is more than the whole season put Fight together. for all so, D.C. The Raiders will be back. They had a slip up. And uh, you're going to have one or two of those during the season, and you just got to be able to recover because you can't have three and four, in my mind, if you're playing in the high bowls. You know, Brady and Rodgers are viewed as the top quarterbacks, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, and they got so many guys getting dinged up and injured. Two undefeated teams left, Ed. We're not going to go through every game. We don't have the time to. But the Falcons, the Chiefs. Do they keep it going? The Chiefs have the Redskins on Monday Night Football. I go with Chiefs. And do you have Atlanta, the Falcons, the Falcones? Ooh, who do they have this week? They play the Buffalo Bills coming in. Buffalo, chance to move to a surprising 3-1 and one with Tyrod Tittle. I would love to see it for Tyrod's sake, but um, no, that, they're not going to win that. Buffalo's Atlanta's not offense and that Atlanta's dumb, too, they are really fast. Really fast. You see what Arthur Blank did, by the way, for, for the uh, concession stuff? He made it all cheap. That was a nice, nice job by him. All the concession good. price is cheap. I That's like good. that. That's good. I like that. All these other teams, you pay 100 bucks to park, and all this food is terrible. Arthur Blank's an owner I want to play for. I can't play worth a lick. And Man, they that's why they're not going to sign you. But that's that's a guy. I, I mean, good owner. He's better than some of these owners out there. I'm not going to go into an owner spiel right now. But uh, A couple of games that caught my eye, though, NFL, where we moved to baseball, Ed. Rams at Cowboys. I'm intrigued by this game because, A, I'm a Cardinals fan. The Rams are in the same division. B, the Cardinals were up on Dallas, and then they decided to just blow that game. Fitzgerald played his tail off, by the way, if you're watching that. He was great, Larry Fitzgerald, the great receiver, one of the best ever. But uh, the Rams, do they have a shot in this game? Can they stop Zeke Elliott and win this game? You picked Dallas 31-14. Yeah, I think mean, it's going to be a lot closer than that. I'm sticking with that. And uh, Here's why. Thursday night. Ten days of rest, Cowboys, Monday night on the West Coast, five day, West, you know, time zone, five days of rest. I think this game is going to be a down to the wire field goal type at the end. You know, Dallas wins though. I just got to throw this in there. When, when they have the schedule like that, you know, why are we putting NFL got to do a better job exactly. of, of putting those teams so that they have equal rest if they're going to 
play now get seven days off or whatever. I think they need to do that. But it's a great um, point by EY right yeah, there. And, and this guy makes points. EY, E V Y, Evie. That's your middle name, Evie. right? V. That's Evie is my middle name. It's, I can't go into the same deep. middle name as McMahon, but we right. won't tell you what his first name is. Uh, if you watch wrestling, you know who I'm talking about. So, isn't that right? I think that's your middle name, isn't it? Okay, make sure I got it right. <laughs> Uh, the other game I'm interested in is the Lions at the Vikings. I know you're rooting for the Lions. Yeah, and I, Alan Williams and Don Carey from the area of Booker T. I think I picked the Lions. You did. I picked Minnesota Tomato. And every time I pick Detroit, I think for the history of the world to win, they lose. The jinx is really bad towards Ooh, them. Where's the New Kent High School? Where's the New Kent High School? New Kent Trojans. New Kent's the Trojans. Yeah, the Trojans they are. Yeah, I, I just I'm just saying it gets something about. About that, did, I believe in Matthew Stafford's play. By the way, they got robbed against Atlanta. Did you see? I, I had that game on. I thought that was a touchdown for Golden Tate. I literally turned off. I thought that game was over. And I was like, you know, Falcons are celebrating. I was like, what in yeah, the world? Yeah, what happened? I was like, I had Golden Tate on my fantasy team, and that could have. It didn't affect me because I still won, but that could have hurt me. Uh, I think Minnesota, even with if Bradford doesn't play, even with the backup QB, I think that they'll find a way to get this done at home. Three and one now, looking pretty sharp. Remember, they had a great start last year, and they kind of slid at the end mm -hmm. of the year. Uh, I think they're better than what they showed last year. And Dalvin Cook might be the rookie of the year on Florida State. He is superb running back for them. So, And the Raiders are trying to get back on track against Denver. And Denver, I'm going Raiders. He's going Raiders. But if you yeah. burn me, Raiders, I'm going to say no Super Bowl for you. No soup for you. No Super Bowl for you. And Jack Del Rio, you got to go. Actually, you don't have to go. I mean, that guy, not happy. It, 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 I don't know. Two straight on the road? That's not good. Yeah, that's that's true. In a division where Denver's playing some defense, Kansas City is mighty, mighty strong, uh, you can't fall back. And by the way, the Sunday night game with Indianapolis and Seattle is terrible. Man, was that, that's unwatchable. That's horrible. If, if, we're, can the baseball playoffs start now? And that's our next, we shift into baseball. I don't know who's Because, my games. gosh, the Seahawks and Colts, can we flex out of that game? No Andrew Luck. Seattle's offense is unwatchable. We're going to watch a bad Colts offense against a good Seahawks defense, and then we're going to watch a... So so defense and a and a rotten offense again block. That's gonna be fun to watch. It's gonna extend yeah. the minutes. So, yeah. but uh, Oakland will be back. Watch a thirty I, for thirty over that. You know, Oakland Denver is a, a big rival too. And then um, that should have been a Sunday night game. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna stick with my Raiders in this one. I kind of went against them the last time. I'm gonna stick with them now. No, oh, the G-Men could fall to zero and four in Tampa, but I got the G-Men getting the win. Whether Odell barks or like a dog or pees like a dog. I got him on my fantasy no, team. He's a dog. Beckham, and don't do that stuff. Don't do that. The kids are watching. It. It's nothing. In Tampa, he's a diva. He needs to take a page of Larry Fitzgerald. Class act, great receiver, humble. Yep, the whole I agree. Bit. I agree. And by the way, speaking of receivers, can Amari Cooper catch the daggone ball? I got him on fence. He drops every pass now. He was great. Now he's dropping everything. He's getting drops. And he's got to catch this this week because there's a chance Crabtree's not playing because of an injury. So yes, yeah. grab an Amari. That's what you're out there for. The only thing more unwatchable than Colts Seahawks would be Bengals at Browns. And thank goodness they didn't put that on Sunday football. <laughs> the going, Battle of Ohio. Yeah, I'm going over to Bengals and that, but there will be two watch, or three fights. I'd rather watch LeBron James play pickup than that. Oh my goodness. That's, that's right. All right, Major League Baseball. We got the Wild Card games just about set. As you can tell, I am repping the D-backs. He will be soon. Hopefully, if the D-backs can finish a better record, he's repping the Yankees. He's got his turtleneck on. His turtleneck. I'll tell you Yankees. what, Ed. I have, a, I have a bad suspicion of what's going to happen. The Yankees, with their feast or famine offense, mean they're going to they hit homers out of park or they're just, they don't have the situational hitting, which has been their, their Achilles heel at times. But they have Judge. They have all the big boppers. Great lineup. And the bullpen's got some arms in it there. I think they will pound the Twins. They'll pound the Twinks 8-1, to one, win the game, coming off the big strikeout yesterday of Tanaka with his career high. I don't feel good about them in the ALDS. They would play Cleveland, right, or Houston. I think it's Cleveland. Yeah, I think so. But I think they're going to – I have a bad feeling if it's Colorado or Milwaukee, likely Colorado, the Rockies are going to – here's what's going to happen. The Diamondbacks will get up in that game 5-2, to two, and then Fernando Rodney's going to come in and blow it in the ninth inning. I hope it doesn't happen. We need J.D. Martinez and Paul Goldschmidt to give us enough of a cushion, swing it out of defense, and go Yankee-style offense here because I have no faith in a bullpen, which has been good with with uh, Rodney and Archie Bradley and that, and that core at the back end lately. I have right. no faith against the Rockies late in that game. I just have no faith. And I think Colorado's going to beat us, and it's gonna be. I'm going to be crying Wednesday night. Not in my beer because I don't drink beer, but in my uh, fruit punch. Well, you're setting yourself up because you're hoping by being negative, it'll help Arizona come through. Um, Arizona won't come through. You're supposed to cheer me up. Not cheering you up. I'm oh, not I got sure. My fruit punch and my jersey. That's I'm it. not sure the Yankees will beat the Twins. They've done. I think they own the series this year. 
But I would not be surprised that they'll get bounced in that one game playoff. History says the Twins have no success against the Yankees. This is a guy that says they were a year away. We're going nowhere. The season's been a success. He's trying to set it up in case they fail. If no. you lose to the Twins, that is a bad loss. You're not you're not supposed to lose to the Twins. D bats we can justify because we we're not supposed we're supposed to be a minor league team anyway. You can't justify now. You lose to Cleveland or Boston or Houston in the, in the AL playoffs, DS or CS. That's fine, no problem. Young team, you cannot lose to Minnesota, who you have demolished every that's time you played them last ten years. Can't do it. But I can see the Yankees starting pitching getting screwed up and or that'll happen in the DS, not in the uh, playing or game. or um, Judge gets into a, a strikeout uh, um, tizzy, you know. Um, but you know, I, I feel I do feel confident they'll beat them. But there's a part of me probably because I, it by as you said, by saying they're going to lose, they're actually going to win. Yeah. Because if you say they're going to win, yeah, then they lose. So you try to do that old reverse psychology. So you're going Colorado too, aren't you? Colorado you against Arizona. I will go with Arizona. U S. I can't say that. It's a three little word. I can't I'm say. Go. It. I'm going to go Arizona. That. Arizona over the Rockies. The Rockies in five. No, that's no, the best of three. Best oh, that's the one game. That's the one game. They play the Dodgers next, okay. and they beat the Dodgers. No, nobody beat the Dodgers. <coughs> Dodgers are going to win the National win. League. So we both the Dodgers are getting the, oh, you said National League. So you got them beating the Nats or the Cubs? Nats. I got the Nats beating the Dodgers. That's for so you out there, Kate it. Yanchulis. I think they're going to done, in spite of Dusty Baker, who is a questionable, shaky manager in big spots. I think they improved the bullpen enough. You got Scherzer. I think the offense will get some timely hits. Uh, I got the Nats being the Dodgers, and I think that if Kershaw doesn't win, LA's in trouble. So I got the Nats outlasting the Dodgers despite Dave Roberts' managerial edge over Dusty Baker. Meanwhile, in the American League, uh, I got the Yankees getting through to the Indians, and they will lose to the Indians. Cleveland rocks, and Terry Francona has their number. And then the Astros and the Red Sox. Ooh. I think it's going to be... The Astros beating the Red Sox, and then Cleveland beats Houston. Verlander could be a difference maker, but I think Corey Kluber is the best pitcher left in the whole sport right now. There's some good ones with Kershaw and Grinke and Verlander, but I'm going with Kluber and the Indians. They get back to it. Indians <coughs> over Nats, which I, I want to say was my preseason pick. I know I had the Indians. Indians over Nats, take it to your local bank, but don't uh, cash it in just yet. Just hang there. I could see those scenarios happen. Um, I hate to say I agree with you, Ooh. but it's going to be. Loads I mean, yeah, I, um, I, I'm kind of feeling the Indians. Close up turtle, my boy. I am. I am kind of feeling Close the Indians. Close up turtle, my boy. Go ahead. And uh, uh, that's a nice turtle on that. How's your turtle on that? I don't know. How's your turtle? Um, I would say Yankees. I would go Yankees over Twins. Then the Yankees will lose to Cleveland and. What's that? A best of five? five? Yeah, it's five. I, I agree. think the, I, I think it'll go, and it'll be probably just four. And then Houston and Boston will go best of five, right? Yeah. That's How about going to you go could five. get a? That's going five, and well, I you could get Sale and Verlander in game five, right? Uh, Sale and Verlander, that'd be a great matchup. So you got, Woo. and you're going with. Um, I'm going with Cleveland over the Nets. You got the Dodgers and who? I'm I got Dodgers and. Oh, I want to say Houston so bad. Go on a limb and pick Houston. Why not? You know what? They have a lot of elements similar to the Royals from a couple years yeah. ago. Yeah. They got Altuve. Pick. They got some speed. They, they have some similar elements. I don't know if their bullpen's as good as Casey's was a couple years ago. but So you want to go Houston and Dodgers to be different? What are we putting on this? Are we putting on a, a soda? Give me Houston. Uh, Jersey? Houston me, and the Dodgers. Because Ferlander's going to do something to help them go on. Houston and the Dodgers. And uh, Dodgers to win. And if the winner wins, the loser's got to buy what? And then did we win? And then, in other words, if our teams don't get there and the winner doesn't have the – and one of us doesn't have so the winner, whatever team has matter. To, whichever yeah. one of our one teams has goes the furthest. Well, we could do that. Or just yeah. you got to win it, okay. period. Which, right. which you prefer, furthest or winner? Furthest. Furthest. Because that right. covers each, each – All right, thing. we'll put on a, a free uh, soda or something, or dessert, cheesecake or something. Yeah, we'll see. Louis Armstrong che cheesecake munching on we don't, cheesecake. We don't sign down for me, so we'll figure something out. That'll do it for Sports Talk Plus. Hear us every Saturday, 10 a.m. to noon on ESPN Radio 94.1. Shoot me an email at hatfieldsports at gmail.com or hit me up on Twitter at Hatfield Sports if you want to get in touch and have it sponsored uh, or sponsor the show. We'll do it from your establishment or do it wherever you want us to, uh, as long as it's legal. We won't go anywhere that's still legal. And we'll do the Sports Talk Plus there. 
Uh, you can get involved with the show, virginiapreps.com and matthewhatfield.com. That is the coach, Ed Young. I am Matt Hatfield, and we'll talk to you again in October. Enjoy your weekend.